My name is Anne Witchard and my book is called Lao Xia in London. My book is about the years that the Chinese writer Lao Xia spent in London in the 1920s, um, from 1924 till 1929. Um, and it's a period of his life that's really important to his writing. What inspired me to write it was the fact that I had been doing research on representations of China in London in the early 20th century and these were mostly very negative and always written from a Western perspective for one reason or, or another, mostly fictionalized. Um, and Lao Xia was the first writer that I'd come across and that there is actually who tackles this kind of representation in his fiction and does it very differently, does it from a Chinese perspective. And I thought that was really important that that was something that was um, out there and recognized. Lao Xia, um, unlike many um, major Chinese writers, um, didn't come from an elite background. He came from an impoverished Manchu background, so he very much made his own way in the world. Um, and the reason that he became so important to Chinese writing was that he started writing during or just after the May 4th revolutionary period, when as part of that movement, um, literature itself went under a revolution which was to make it more accessible to ordinary people and so he was responsible for developing a new type of writing called Bai Hua. He wrote in his native Peking dialect um, and that was to become, uh, that, that was what gained him initial recognition. So whilst he was lo in London during the 1920s teaching English at the School of Oriental Studies, he wrote three novels that were fictionalized in Chinese magazines. So by the time he went back to China, he had he was a major literary name. Whilst Lao Xiao was in London, he read very widely in Western literature. So he read Dickens um, and he also read his contemporaries like Virginia Woolf and James Joyce and Joseph Conrad. So he, he had a grounding in, in the, the Victorian realist novel, shall we say, in um, epistolary works, in um, the, the humour of Dickens, which, which is an influence, and also in the, the newer, more experimentalist literature and construction of writers like Joyce and Conrad. And I would argue that all of these influences fed into his work, but also that his earlier education in China and his, his, um, his rather, he was an educated man, but an autodidact at the same time. Um, he, he, he was very well versed in Tang poetry, for example. We know he gave lectures on Tang poetry whilst he was in London and, and recitals as well. So I think that his work is very much a, a, a marvelous modernist fusion of both of these cultural things. And that's why I think globally Lao Xia um, is fascinating as somebody who, who's at that intersection of East-West culture, which um, during this period was so productive for Western artists. And that's something we look at from a Western point of view. Um, but it's interesting to see it from a Chinese perspective as well. And that kind of, um, that kind of trans, transcultural um, exchange that's happening at that period. Whilst Lao Xia was in London reading and writing, um, he, was, he was producing work that would have a very strong influence on the course of, or the emergence of, what you might say, fiction or the novel as we know it um, in China, because fiction was not a genre in China that was a particularly elevated or respected um, genre. But it was very, the novel was very important to um, rev the revolutionary process. It was recognized by um, thinkers like Liang Qichao and Hu Xia. But it, it, it was seen as something that was necessary for, for um, the, the building of the new China. And so Lao Xia, from, from his position in the West, d looking at the way that the position of China on the global stage and of perceptions of Chinese people and also um, the way that he develops new forms and styles of writing, these all come together and, and you know, the, just 
just the fact of his traveling um, and his, his being in another culture and then feeding back into Chinese culture at the time, I think is quite crucial to the development of, of Chinese literary fiction during the 20th century.